<laughs> Do the Egyptian thing in it. <laughs> Why does every live Facebook video start out with, are we on? Are we live right now? Are we, is it on? You guys seeing it? I'm seeing it. It's a little delayed. All right. Well, we are filming uh, really right now through sometime in May or so, hopefully early May. We're filming for Guns and Gear, ninth season of Guns and Gear TV show. We're here with Murray from Crossbreed Holsters. Hi. And uh, Murray, you've been with Crossbreed a while, huh? Almost five years. So we thought we'd, uh, we'd get together. We were filming on the range this morning doing some fun stuff uh, with the holsters and belts, which is an often overlooked accessory for your EDC concealed carry. And I um, thought we would just bring them into the, into the studio and do some stuff. So if you have any concealed carry questions, any holster questions, any belt questions, any leather questions, write them down. Hit send, and let's answer them. Um, I'm going to just have my little computer down here, so when I look down like this, I'm trying to read your comments and see uh, if anything is happening here. And let's I'll see. jump in here. So what he was talking about, this is our executive belt. Um, our executive belt we came out with um, last year. We wanted a belt that didn't look like a gun belt. We wanted it to look more like a dress or a... Um, just a, a refined belt that you can wear every day with a suit, with pants, with boots, whatever you want to wear it with, but is also a concealed carry belt or just a carry belt um, that will support your gun. It's a double uh, layer construction, two seven ounce, seven, seven eight ounce layers. Stiff. Um, very stiff. Real stiff. Um, it breaks in well. It'll break in uh, and so it fits you very well, but it will still remain uh, rigid to support your concealed carry gun. So, you know, that's kind of one thing we were talking about. We can probably starting with the belts is a great place to start. Um, so, we hear this on Gun Talk Radio all the time. People talking about carrying concealed, is it comfortable, uh, it's, or it's not comfortable, complaining about that. And a lot of times the belt is a good place to start to figure out what the deal is, you know, what the issue is. Um, you need a belt that your, your holster is not going to sag on you and you're pulling your pants up all the time. It makes it uncomfortable. Um, and so you've got that. And then also something I like about this is is actually both of these, they don't look super tactical. So um, we're trying to be concealed. Yeah, exactly. We're trying to be a yeah. bit covert here, right? So sometimes too tactical for a lot of us, especially gun guys and gals, you can see somebody go, ooh, that screams gun, um, which we don't want to do. Um, but these are pretty covert, you know, and this one I like. This is kind of, what do you call this belt? That's our crossover belt. Crossover. It's kind of infinite adjustability for when you're feeling, you know, on your skinny days. Or if you have a big, large, stuffed, loaded baked potato. I don't have skinny days. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, different guns, perhaps. Different pants, how they fit. You can adjust, and you don't have to go and you know, a, a quarter inch or half inch adjustments, it's really just as, as tight as you want to make it. Um, so that's kind of cool. You guys also have something new, and really it's it's out there, but the real launch is at NRA show? Correct, yes. Tell so them. you'll be able to actually see it at NRA. Um, this is our founder series that we are launching. There's um, been a little bit of uh, scuttlebutt on uh, Facebook of it. Um, it's completely different kind of leather than we've offered before. Um, different. This is uh, this is white rhino leather. <laughs> yeah, yeah, super oh, rare. The, the last one. Yeah, yeah, stabbed <laughs> all of them and got it and just made them into hides. Um, it, it has different logo on it. Um, it's just a completely different feel going back to our roots of so, wanting something. That's so just, there is something actually different about the leather. I mean, tell right. Them. So it, we started with veg sham leather, but then we had it permeated with oils. Um, okay. And in doing that, it makes it this. Um, this one's a middle of the road dark color they they range from very dark to a little lighter it's all depending on the leather so no okay. two pieces are the same okay you get two pieces um out of the same hide they're gonna look a little different um they have a really cool texture when you bend them they kind of do it it is cowhide it is a very premium cowhide it's very soft on the back 
So what does that do for you as far as wearability goes? So on the range today, um, when we were on the range, I wore it for about 45 minutes. And it's not really hot here. It's in the 80s. Yeah. Um, and after about 45 minutes of wearing it, just drawing, shooting out of it, I took it off and it was already completely curved and shaped yeah. in my body. Yeah, yeah I noticed that. it stayed that way. It's the amount of oil that's in the leather. So it is going to break in very quickly. So you're going to have a really comfortable holster really fast. And I found that I w it was really easy to get to my gun take it out, put it right back where it was. It, it stayed in place really well, which really, I guess, all of your holsters, that design does that. Right, yeah, and, and there's just more options that keep coming out um, for that as well. Um, there's more clip options that come out. You know, we are a dealer for Ulti Clip, and they have options. So for people that don't want to carry a belt um, that are carrying the lighter pistols, they have that option to clip it onto something. Um, we offer three different of our style clips that they can use from the, the uh, snap locks to J clips uh, to Velcro clips. Okay, so they can they can specify that. Correct. Um, so you've been to a lot of shows lately. Yeah. And you get a lot of questions. Tell me what are some of the good ones you've gotten this year so far, or funny ones? Yeah, I mean or we goofy ones. <laughs> we get a lot of people that ask, um, you know, are you worried about shooting yourself, carrying a carrying appendix? Um, right. You know, and the the statement I ask on that is. If your gun's going off when it's in your holster, I wouldn't want it anywhere on my body, not just appendix. There's I don't something want it going else. Off. Yeah, wrong. there's other issues. If your gun's going off by itself in your waist, get a different gun. Right. Um, it just, I think a lot of people just aren't sure about how to make it all work, and they want to buy one component at a time. Um, that's why the belt thing really gets brought up a lot. We have people that are like, it's just sagging. It pulls down. And you look, and they're wearing a thin single layer. Um, just you a know, dress belt. Bargain store, yeah, yeah uh, nylon belt, and it, it won't support. So it pulls down, and we're like, well, that's the problem, and, and it, they usually walk away with a new belt. Yeah. So ask us your questions. Uh, that's why we're here. We want to talk about concealed carry and then the carrying of the, the gun, the holster setup. And it doesn't have to be specific to crossbreed. You know holsters, you know yeah. belts and all that stuff, and you've dealt with it and seen all different varieties of what works. Now, you guys do stuff that is, um, going back to app appendix carry, you make appendix carry holsters. Yes. Why is that so popular in the last few years? Um, at, we just got back from the USCCA show, and we had a lot of people coming straight out of the classes. They do a lot of classes, um, and the instructors, when they'd come back out, they'd come into our booth, and they were wanting to change from where they've carried forever to an appendix style. And the, a lot of the instructors there were pushing that um, it was about when they were fighting, they, you know, um, if they got knocked down, their gun's behind them, or if they're get fighting for their gun, if it's behind them, the one hand versus the two, or being able to get with your offhand. Right. Um, it's one of those things. I carry appendix a lot. I, I used to carry three to five o'clock. It's just where you're comfortable with, and not everybody can carry in the same position. Yeah. You can't just say, this is the one spot to carry. If that was true, there'd be one holster design, and it'd be done, and everybody would carry it. And it most people have a way. box of holsters. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I have several holsters. It depends on which gun I'm carrying is the way I'm going to do it. I try to stick with one for a long period of time. Um, but if I want to change around, I'm going to carry wherever that gun fits and conceals the best on me. Now, some people say you should carry the same way every time because you're going to get confused in a fight. You're not. You're going to go muscle, here and you're going somewhere else. Yeah, muscle memory-wise, that's probably... I mean, if you've carried in this one position for years and years and you've done thousands and thousands of draws and all of a sudden you put it in a cross front appendix, you're immediately going to go back here because sure. that's normal. You're going to have to go out and train and get used to that one. I wouldn't change every day. If I'm going to change, it's going to be something I'm going to go to the range and draw and draw and shoot and draw and then change. Practice with it. Get hundreds or thousands of rounds. Um, so, so DeWitt says, so the belts help. Well... I guess it depends on what you mean by what do they help with. Yes, uh, a good gun belt, not just any belt, is good for carrying. Not a, at all. A very stiff belt. So not only are you worried about it flexing this way so that your holster tilts away from you um, when it's on your body, it's also this um, flex uh, on, on your waistline. You don't want your holster to flip away from you, but you also want it to pull down. If you can grab a hold of your belt and you can bend it this way, either direction, it, it's not going to support. You're going to have a sag uh, where your gun's sitting. Yeah. A, a good, a good heavy gun belt. No matter who makes or what it is, you cannot bend it this direction. It, it has no flip give. out. Correct. Yeah. Um, and that's what we're talking about is a good gun belt. So if you got your concealed carry permit, you got your gun, 
you got a holster and you put it on and you never change the belt that you're wearing, most likely it's not really the best belt suited for concealed carry. Because I mean, you know, a, a regular carry gun is going to be with, with you know, six to ten rounds of nine or, or whatever you're carrying. I mean, you're going to a couple pounds of steel yeah, one on to three you. pounds. Yeah. Um, and you know, those belts aren't made for that. So, but a, but a gun belt is made for that. So you don't have this flipping out on you kind of thing. Um, and gun belts, no matter who manufactures them, gun belts are not cheap to make. Gun belts are made out of a very good material. They cost a lot to make. They're usually double layer construction. Um, it, so they're using twice as much material as your single layer cheaper belts. It costs more money to do that, and that's why they cost more. But in the long run, buying one belt that's going to last five or six years versus buying about every six months you're going to wear out right. trying to carry, it pays for itself. What do you think about uh, leather belts versus uh, nylon? Um, I, we, we offer both. Mm -hmm. um, it, uh, it's, it's a personal thing. I prefer leather. I like wearing leather. I wear boots all the time. Just the look um, of it. I, I like the look. I like the yeah. feel. I like when it breaks in the way it is. Um, nylon just feels slick to me. It gets really soft quick. So after several months, your nylon's really soft. And at that point, now you're back to that. It doesn't have the support. It you loses know, you, that rigidity. Yeah. When you first get them, they're really, really stiff. And, and I like that. And I wore nylon belts for a lot of years. Uh, I just like the leather because once my leather belts break in and they get in the shape that my body is. They're still stiff, but they don't change from then. Um, so Rachel asks, uh, what are some carry options for women? Um, for us, um, we have several. We have our modular concealed carry uh, package, which has a modular holster. It, you can get a belly band system with it. You can get a purse defender system with it. You can get the bedside backup. So it's the same holster. Um, same holster, Velcro based. You Velcro take it off backing. and put it. So it, today you're carrying in your purse. Tomorrow you want to carry in your belly band. You have that option. If you want to get somewhere and you need to take your holster off, you can Velcro it to whatever you want to Velcro it to. And that's pretty cool. I've, we've seen that. We've used it on the shows. Uh, the purse defender. What I like about it is it kind of works in basically any purse. Exactly. So you don't have to go buy. And concealed carry purses are really expensive. They're really like, expensive, and everybody knows that they look like. It's like, that's a concealed carry purse. Right. It's just the way they're made to, to support what they need to. They have to build those stiffeners in um, the pockets to get it to work, and it's, it's really easy to pick them out. So, so the purse defender is a piece of Kydex that is an L-shaped. So you put this part in the bottom of the purse and it kind of holds the the inside of the purse open a little bit right correct yeah it goes in and so it sits flat everything in your purse goes on that l-shaped bracket and then you put your velcro holster anywhere you want on that panel yeah. so you can have it at the bottom can't angled it. up wherever yeah and then so your gun is always where you can grab it at the top of your purse but when you go to draw everything in your purse is sitting on the panel they, the panel won't come out and most of the panels fit in the bottom of the purse so it's just a snug nice fit and absolutely do don't put a gun in a purse without a holster. Oh, I know. I mean, you got all this stuff floating around and chapstick and lipstick and keys and whatever, and stuff can get on the trigger and push the trigger. And don't um, put it in a holster that the gun can fall out of in the holster in the purse. If it's just floating in a holster that doesn't have, you know, if it's just, just a cloth holster that there's nothing in it, it's floating in your purse, it could fall out. Like, that's true. There's make no sure retention it's secured in something that locks into place. Yeah. Um, another question we have is what's a good leather belt for IWB? I mean, it doesn't, as far as the belt goes, IWB versus outside the waistband, doesn't yeah, really matter, does Yeah, it? the weight's the same. It's going to pull down either in one or two locations, depending on what you carry. Um, uh, all of our leather belts are constructed the same, whether it's a gun belt, whether it's a executive belt, a crossover belt, or okay. Velcro-based belts. They're all the same heavy leather. It's just the style we make it, the stitching we do, the buckle options we offer um, that make them different. Now, you do have different... Uh, widths or yeah. this way, right? We have inch and a half and inch and a quarter. The inch and a quarter is a dressier option. Some uh, slacks, men's slacks, won't accept inch and a half. Right. Um, and then a lot of women's clothing will not accept inch and a half, so they do the inch. And so half. for women's clothing and, and dressier stuff, get the get the narrower. Yeah. And we have a women's concealed carry belt. It's a reversible gun belt. Really? Um, on that belt, it's uh, brown on one side, black on the other. It has a reversible buckle. You can get it in gold. You can get it in chrome, or you can get it in gunmetal. Um, that one, we actually put a stiffener inside, um, a woven stiffener because it is so thin. It is, um, maybe 10 ounces thick. Um, so oh, wow. about half the thickness of this belt okay. or a little more than half the thickness, it, but it has all the support of a heavy gun belt, but just for women. Okay. Okay. Um, Ron says I have two crossbreed holsters, both appendix carry, both horse hide. 
Once broken in, very comfortable. Well, that's always been something for you guys. You you focus on comfort and the right. concealability part of it. Yeah. And, and breaking a holster in, um, most holsters, when you wear them a um, few days, they get really well broken. We have people that ask a lot. You know, I put my holster on warp for an hour and it wasn't, you know, broke in yet. So I took it off and I, wore, I tried it again and it wasn't instead of putting it on and just wearing it. Yeah. Um, I, I tell people, like, the best way to break it in, especially this time of year, put your holster on, go mow your yard. Yeah. When you get done mowing your yard, that hot. holster is going to be hot. It's probably going to be damp. And then when you lay it down, lay it kydex down so the leather's up and it'll dry in that shape. And next time you go to put it on, it fits in the exact spot you just had it in. And then your your breaking period's done within a few hours. And your yard's beautiful. Yeah. You'll be the, <laughs> you'll be the envy of your neighbors and super tactical. <laughs> um, okay. I'm just looking here at any other questions we've got coming in. You know, one thing when we talk about carrying concealed and comfort, you know, there is a great line, and it's true that carrying concealed is not so supposed to be comfortable. It's supposed to be comforting. Um, but that being said, if it's not, if it's just completely uncomfortable, You're not you won't carry. It. Yeah. And, and there's a, a level. I mean, there's some amount of discomfort because you're putting something in your waistline or out of your waistline that has weight that might have pressure to it. Um, but it still should be, it's got to be comfortable enough. We have people that call and say, Hey, I wear your holster, you know, for 18 hours a day, every single day. Yeah. It, if it wasn't comfortable, they wouldn't do it, but it's figuring out what makes it that comfortable for you. But if you go in expecting that this is going to feel like your, your nylon gym shorts, it's not going to. No. Um, let's talk about ankle carry. Yeah. Ankle carry is something that comes up a lot. Um, you guys make an ankle holster still? Yep. Okay. Well, I mean, pros and cons. So ankle carry, um, I carried ankle carry as for a backup gun that it works well. I you know, or a vest um, as a primary carry. It, it just depends. Um, there's a lot of people that do it. That's the only place they can conceal. If it's it's better to have it on your ankle than to not have it at all. Sure, but I agree. If you have an option to do it somewhere else. Unless you train a lot, it is very difficult to get to your ankle holster and get your pants up and your gun out really quickly compared to somebody else how they're drawing, especially if you're having to fight somebody. Right. That's the, I mean, most people can walk up to a dry range, you know, and pull up their, pull it out and go. But all of a sudden you add an aspect of somebody fighting with them. That's a totally different situation. Yeah. Um, it's a great backup option. Um, and there's a lot of people that have no option on their waist, people that wear really, um, dressier clothes you know especially right. women that um we at the uscca show we had a woman that she wore a tucked in shirt a black shirt um with pants with no belt loops every day what do you do yeah but she had very large cuffs on her pants okay so the ankle option that was her only option and she wasn't willing to do it in her purse because she didn't feel comfortable having it in her purse she wanted it in her person she so for her that. that's the best option it, that's she's gonna have to train that way and she understood that but that's better than leaving at home well i think that's the point when you talk about concealed carry is it really is good to have several different ways you're comfortable carrying, which means you have to practice with it. Um, but, you know, yeah, ankle carry is, is not going to be as fast. No. Um, you're generally going to have to carry a smaller gun than what you could carry Correct. Um, on, on your hip, uh, on, your, on your appendix or something like that. Yeah, your normal everyday carry on your waist is going to be a large gun on your ankle because most people's pants cuffs aren't big enough to accept you know, the larger grip because there's no angle um, on your grip to get it where it's going to stick forward and backward because most people's angles just aren't huge. Right, right. Um, so what's next for you guys? Um, we're just, we'll continue along. We always try to improve something, um, try to come up with something new every year. We usually try to add to our modular line um, to give something, but we're always developing. You know, that's right now we're working on several projects. Um, that either will hopefully be out later this year. And also, you, you try to work with the gun manufacturers so that when they introduce a new gun, you can have a holster ready to go. Right. And that's a benefit. We hand make all of our pockets. Um, so when a new gun comes in, we walk it downstairs, hand it to the, the leader on our floor, and within minutes, he can have a new holster made because he makes it by hand. He, makes, yeah. he forms that cadex by hand. So if we get a new gun in from a manufacturer, that day we can have the holster for it. Wow. So as soon as they release a new gun, usually we can be one of the first ones out because we don't have any molding time. We All we do is just hand make them. You just make it. <laughs> you guys are going to be at NRA Show, yeah, right? Absolutely, yep. So for everybody going to NRA Show to Atlanta, stop by the Crossbreed Holsters booth. Murray will be there. You can harass him. 
Um, and you can buy stuff, right? Yep. Yeah, we have um, items for sale. We have our most popular guns on the most popular holsters for sale. We have belts for sale. Uh, of course, T-shirts. Uh, we'll have a discount code there. So if you'll come by the booth, you can get a discount. Um, Save on some money. You can place an order. Yep. Because you really can't have too many holsters. No. <laughs> yeah. And never have too many belts either. No. I, you'd, I make fun of some people because they have lots and lots of shoes, but I have several belts just because of what I want to carry and what I want to look like. That's it. All right. You guys be careful out there. Make sure you're carrying. Make sure you have a good belt and uh, kind of work on your system. Thanks, Murray. Thank you. Have a good Wednesday, Thursday, whatever day it is. I need some credits. <laughs>